So I know why you're here. You've got a, a local software development project on your file system and you want to connect it to a GitLab repo in the cloud and you're not quite sure how to do it. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's actually two ways to do it. There's the easy cheat way, which I think is the best way to do it. And then there's the official way that does Git remote ad origin, which can run into all sorts of problems, become very, very frustrating. And I'm going to show you both approaches and I'm going to try and make an argument that the cheat easy way is in fact the best way to do it. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at the serverside.com. And last year I published an article about how to connect a local project to a GitLab repository. I talked about the official way to do it. And I got overcome with guilt because I kept thinking, you know, there's actually a much, much easier way to do that connection. I call it the cheat way, and that's what I want to show you right now. As you can see on my file system, I've got a big project. In this big project, there's Java files, Python files, package JSON files, Gradle files, Maven files. There's even a Mojo file in there. And I want to connect this local project to a repository in GitLab. So how do I do it? Well, here's the easy way to do it. I'm going to create a project in the cloud. I'm going to create a new project on GitLab. I'm going to create a, a basic blank project. I'll call it my um, GitLab project. It's going to be public. That'll just make life a little bit easier for me. And I'm actually going to put a readme file in it. Now, in fact, if you do the official way of connecting a local repository to GitLab, uh, if there's anything in it, it causes all sorts of problems. So this cheat way will work whether there's something in your repository or not. I'm going to add a readme. I'm going to create the project. This now creates a, a basic project in GitLab. And I mean, there's only got one file in it, but it could have a, a hundred files in it. I don't know. And you'll notice there's that beautiful blue button there. Um, and if I click on that, it gives me the URL to clone this repository. So I'm going to click on that. So that is the unique URL that points to that repo. And then I'm going to clone that repo. I'm just going to go down to my local file system, open the git bash shell. I'm going to do the standard git clone and I'm going to paste in that beautiful GitLab URL. I'm going to click enter and as I click enter, keep your eye on the prize over there on the right hand side. Boom, my GitLab project gets cloned. I double click over here. I see the readme file and any other files that are in the project. And all of a sudden you've now got that remote repository on your local file system. And when you do a clone, everything's configured about how to connect to that remote repository, how to push to it, how to pull from it, how to do fetches. It's all configured for you. That's why this is the cheat way. This is why it's the easy way. So then you just go to your big project on your local file system. You do control A, you do control C, right? Yeah, you just copy all of those files. If you've initialized a Git repository in there, you do not copy the hidden .git folder. So that's the only file that you wouldn't copy in this project. So ignore the hidden .git fol folder that might be in there. If you've initialized a Git repository in there, copy all of the other files, then go to the project that you cloned, paste those files in. So now you've taken all the files from your project. You've now pasted them into the project that you've cloned. Now, if there's some files that are the same, then you know maybe you have to resolve that locally. But if it's a small repository or a new repository, this is super simple. I just copy my files in, then I open up the git bash shell in this folder. I do the requisite git add dot. I do the git commit dash m. That was easy. I click enter and now all i have to do is the git push origin you might get challenged um, if you haven't set up your credentials yet um, i've already logged into my GitLab account from this machine so my sssh credentials or http credentials are already set up the push is done i'm going to come back to GitLab over here keep your eye on the prize refresh and 
boom, all of the files that are on my local file system have been pushed up to GitLab. It couldn't get easier. Uh, there's no pushing with force. There's no issues uh, in terms of having to do a rebase. Um, the, it's super easy, right? Now, if you do have a Git repository initialized in that project, you might lose your Git commit history. And you know, if you had Eclipse or VS Code or Visual Age for Java pointing at that repository, you're gonna have to point it at the new location or something like that. Um, but it's super easy, right? That's, that's got to be the easiest way to go in and connect your local project to a remote repository in GitLab. Now, the uh, official way to do it, which will run into problems, uses the git remote add origin command. And that is what I'm going to show you next. Hey, I'm just editing this video and I realized that in the introduction, I never mentioned my two hour long Git and GitLab tutorial that's up on YouTube. I really put my heart and soul into it. I think it's really good. It doesn't waste any time. It covers a lot of material. And if you watch it, you'll become very, very dangerous with this Git and GitLab tooling. So if you want to learn more about Git, please check out that video of mine about Git and GitLab that's currently published on YouTube. Okay. Now get back to pushing your projects to GitLab. Okay, we just pushed a local project to a GitLab repository using my cheat method. I do want to mention that using that cheat method, you're expecting that remote GitLab repository to have something in it. That's why I added that readme file. If you don't have anything in your GitLab repository, you, you might not be able to clone it because Git doesn't like cloning things that don't have a Git commit history. By just adding that file, that readme, it created a Git history on that repository. Now, what if it's a completely blank project? Well, that's what I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to try and connect my local project, my big project on my machine, to an empty GitLab repository. So I'm going to create a, a new repository on GitLab. I'll call it nothing in it because there's going to be nothing in it. Empty space will have more in it than this project. I'll make it public just to make cloning and pushing and all that other stuff a little bit easier. And you'll notice it starts saying, hey, this is a weird situation. You've got nothing in this repository. Uh, you might want to connect to it and push something up here. But before you do, you've got to do this git remote add command. And that's the one that we're going to use in just a moment. But I got to go over to my big project here. Now, my big project isn't managed by git right now. But this scenario assumes that you've got a git commit history on your local machine and you want to maintain that history. You want that history going up to the server. So I'm going to go to this project here, open the git bash shell, and I'm going to say git in it. And as I do, keep your eye on the prize. Boom, all of a sudden the .git folder is created. I'll do the git requisite add to stage all these files, and then I'll do a git commit and say dash m first commit that puts the first commit in there and now that i've got a git repository with a history that i want to maintain i might even do a git ref log just to see the commit id dda 6 a 0 e i want that commit id to go up to the server i want to see that id on the server i want to push my project to the server. Uh, how do I do that? Well, I have to add that remote repository as one of the repositories that my git instance knows. So I'm going to do this command, git remote add origin, gitlab.com slash learn git fast. That's the name of my account slash nothing in it. That is the name of the project. Again, that is the code that it showed you over here. So I'm going to issue that command, click enter, click enter hard. And once I've done that, uh, my local Git repository now knows about the place that it should push code when I do a git push command. The first time to do a git push, I got to set the upstream branch. So I say dash u that lets uh, the remote repository know that I'm going to push a, a branch it doesn't know about. It's got nothing in it, it knows nothing right now. Git push dash u origin. Origin is just the name we typically give the remote server. You can say git push dash u GitLab. And the next time you do a pull, you could say git pull GitLab. We just use origin, it's standard. And the name here, oh, I see it's master. We're supposed to be using main. We're not supposed to be using master anymore. Uh, GitLab uses main. Uh, this is a new installation of Git. It's still using master. So I'm going to push master. 
git push dash u origin master and boom all of a sudden you can see those files have now been pushed up to the server but when i come back here i don't see anything didn't work the git push didn't work. i'm just joking do a little refresh there and there we see all of those files pushed up and hey let's look at this git ref log dda6a0e where do i see that dda6a0e so as you can see we've actually pushed up that commit we've actually pushed up the commit on my local machine to that repository now if i wanted to add files up there i could add files could share files with other people we can do the push we can do the pull all of that will work okay now that's how you do it the official way now you may have done it the official way and run into trouble um, because if there's already a commit history on the server and you try and push your commit history to the server they'll clash and it won't allow you to do it and you have to resurrect obi-wan kenobi you gotta bring out the force in order to do that or you can do a rebase those two options are what i'm going to show you next so we were able to push a project to a remote GitLab repository using my cheat, clone, and copy method, but that did lose your local Git commit history. So we then took a look at how to do a Git remote add origin command, which preserves your local Git commit history, but it only worked with an empty remote GitLab repository. What if you actually have a, a remote GitLab repository with something in it? and you want to preserve your local git commit history how do you do that well there's two approaches one is to do a git push with force so we say follow the same commands as we did last time but when we do the push command we add the dash dash force switch the problem with that is branch protection rules in GitLab won't allow you to do it. So you have to do some configuration to allow that to work if you have rights to do that. And secondly, pushing with force is not a good idea. It can mess up other people's Git commit histories and it's not recommended. So don't do that. A rebase is easier. Um, well, a rebase is safer. The rebase intimidates some people. I've got a few tutorials on how to do a rebase. If rebase intimidates you, check those out. Um, but it's really the best way to do it. So I wanna replicate that. I'm gonna create a, a new GitLab repository here and I'll call this something in it. It'll be public and it'll have a readme file in it. So it's got that readme file in it. It's got a git commit history in it. If you don't believe me, you can see that git commit right there, A52419D. Now I'm gonna go onto my file system I'm actually going to delete that .git folder from the last exercise uh, because I want to create a brand new Git repository here that is completely fresh. So I say git in it and boom, all of a sudden that .git folder appears. And with that git folder appearing, I can do the requisite git add, git commit dash m first commit. And now my local file system has a git commit history. However, if I do a git ref log, You'll notice that the commit that I have, 738C, is different from the first commit on the server. And that means uh, I've got divergent commit histories. We don't share a common first commit between the server and my local file system. And if you try and do a, a push between branches, it'll get rejected because it'll say, hey, I don't know how to figure things out when there's no common denominator in terms of a commit history between them. So how do you resolve this issue? Well, what you do is you do your regular git remote add origin command. So I'm going to need that git lab URL there. I'm going to copy the HTTP one. If you're doing SSH, you would copy the SSH one above. And then over here, I'm going to say git remote add origin and paste in that url now this tells my local repository about that remote gitlab server and so now i want to get the git commit history from that server so i say git let's um pull down that main branch from the server notice i'm on the master branch this works when uh the 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 tip of your git commit history is on one branch and then the remote server's tip is on another branch. So I'm going to say git pull origin main. 
that will bring information about the remote server down into my local machine, but it doesn't affect any of my files quite yet. What I need to do is I need to take my Git history and rebase it onto the Git commit history of the GitLab server. So we're gonna keep GitLab as the source of truth. So what I do here is, well, I guess first I'm gonna do a Git ref log. I'm gonna notice my commit is 73 and the commit on the server is A52. I'm then gonna say git, and what is it, git ref log. Not get ref log, get rebase. I got my re's confused. Get rebase origin main. So I'm now going to can I spell that correctly, origin main. So I'm going to rebase my master branch where I currently am onto the main branch. So get rebase origin main. And then I'm going to switch to that main branch. I'm going to do a git merge to merge anything that was on the master branch into that main branch. Now, you'll actually see that I've got the readme file over here as well. So I've actually brought all of the files together into this main branch. And if I git log a dog, <laughs> all decorate one line graph. This is a great command, especially with rich git commit histories. It's called git log a dog, all decorate one line graph, A-D-O-G, a dog. Um, you'll see that currently I'm on commit D4F069C and the very first commit in my commit history is no longer the, the first commit that I had before. It's actually the commit from the server. So the, the rebase has taken my git commit history and it's actually put it on top of the history that I pulled in. Now my commits don't stand alone. My commits come after the initial commit in that git commit history. And you can see D4F06C9 is on top of the initial commit. So my first commit is on top of it. Now, everything's beautiful, everything's rectified. I can do a git push origin from main. This now pushes all of my files up to the server. And if I do a refresh over here, you'll see all the files have come over. Isn't it a beautiful thing? Um, and for that matter, I can come over here and do a git branch dash a dash d master and actually delete that master branch. And so now when I do git branch dash a and list all the branches, all I've got is a main branch locally and that main branch on the server. So everything is completely in line and everything is completely consistent. And there you go. That's how you properly, without doing a git push with force, um, take your files and maintain your local git commit history uh, and then connect and push your files to a GitLab server. So there you go. Um, now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials over there on Git, on GitHub, on GitLab, on DevOps tools, on Java, Python, Scrum, you name it. Um, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. Um, and I would like to say that uh, I've actually got a two-hour tutorial on GitLab um, and how to use GitLab. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about GitLab, please check out that tutorial. Um, also, I would say uh, if you check the description, there's a couple of links to some books that I've written. Uh, one is called Pickering is Springfield about the Simpsons, and another one is Hibernate Made Easy. And I'm also working with with a young freelancer over on the server side and she's written the Scrum Master Certification Guide. So if you're interested in getting Scrum certified, check that out. Um, and finally, if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?